Unsure whether you need renter's insurance? Here's what you need to know. I'm Randy Dukes, a DFW Realtor in Old Town Louisville, and I'm here today with Bernice Mendez. She is a State Farm Insurance agent also in Old Town Louisville. And we talked a couple of weeks ago about homeowners insurance, and today we're gonna to touch on renter's insurance. Um, I deal with a lot of clients who are leasing while they're preparing to own a home, and I know you have the same experience, and so we're just gonna to quickly touch on renter's insurance and the importance of it. So when I help clients with lease properties, a lot of times the landlord will say, we wanna see proof of renter's insurance, but I also see the opposite where they don't require that. What are the benefits and why should you have renter's insurance? So regardless of whether or not it's a requirement, it's just very important because you're protecting yourself. Um, so when it comes to renter's insurance, it's gonna cover two main things. The first thing is going to be your liability. Liability is very important because it covers you, it protects you and your assets from any type of lawsuit or some type of claim that you're found negligent for. And a lot of people don't understand, especially if you're in an apartment complex. So for example, if I leave my stove on and now I cause a fire, the apartments can come after me, right? Because I was I have found negligent. never thought of that. I've always thought of renter's insurance as just being about the items that you own. But yes. that's a great point. And maybe now it caused something to happen to my neighbor. Right. And they can come back and say, well, because of what Bernice did, right. her negligence, now I'm out of a home, I've been displaced, it's caused emotional distress, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, I'm responsible now for even their stuff. So it really depends on what that looks like. I hate to think, we try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but now on days it's like, mm -hmm. people will sue for anything. Oh yeah. So it's just protecting yourself from that liability. Mm -hmm. I actually did have a customer, an elderly customer that left the water running in uh -huh. her kitchen, you know? And it, this was at a point where her family started to see, and we probably need to move her to assisted living, but she did have water damage in her apartment because of that running faucet. Mm -hmm. And now the apartments are wanting to make sure that their apartment is fixed, so we submitted a claim under her liability. Mm -hmm. So there's just so much that goes into that. If you have a pet, things like that. Most of the time, if you have a pet, they're gonna require you to have some type of coverage. Right. But when you look at apartments or just some of these landlords or leasing companies that are um, looking at how to protect themselves, they're going to require it. And it's that liability piece. Okay. Then we look at the second thing that it covers and that's more for you. This mm -hmm. is the personal property piece. Anything in that apartment, if I flip that apartment upside down, anything that falls out that's mine, is now covered under that personal property. Okay. And that, the minimum on that is normally like the standard $20,000. It depends on how much stuff you have, right. right? I have people that are living in these really nice apartments and they own $100,000 worth of things. Right. So now we're covering those belongings. So if there's a fire in your apartment, if there's some water damage in your apartment, now your belongings are also covered. Right. And we're able to restore you, put you back to where you were before that loss. Okay. So there's just so much that goes into it, regardless of whether or not it's required, it's always recommended. Right, I agree. And I think there's an idea that insurance is so costly and we're paying into something but renter's insurance is typically very reasonable. Okay. Can you give us a ballpark of what it might cost? It can somebody? be anywhere from like $12 a month to $30 a month. I mean, it's wow. something that we probably pay that for our cell phone insurance. That's right. And it's just very inexpensive. And a lot of younger people that are, are still renting, a lot of the young adults, um, they just don't know how inexpensive it is. Right. So. Yeah. Right, and it's mm -hmm. always worth that conversation because you're right. I mean, we're spending that on Starbucks every month. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and you could be protecting everything you own, yes. which, yeah, definitely valuable. Yes. So we talked about the things that are covered. What might not be covered with renter's insurance? So when we look at the liability portion of it, we're thinking of anything that was intentionally done by you that's not covered. So if I intentionally um, get my dog to attack my neighbor because she's getting on my nerves or I'm just not, I'm upset with her, that's not covered okay. um, when it comes to liability. Any intentional act or anything that you're not found negligent for. Um, so they do need to prove negligence. Okay. Personal property, there's gonna be stipulations or th exclusions within your contract. So it's important that, depending on who your carrier is, that you understand what are some of those things that are excluded, such as water damage possibly, mm -hmm. that um, what we call leak 
limited seepage or leakage of water. This is gonna be water damage that I cannot see when it happens. It might be happening behind a wall, and it might be something that the apartments, you know, just didn't right. maintain the pipes, and now it's a leaky pipe, and over time it's gonna cause water damage to my personal property. Unless you have an additional coverage for that and you're paying extra for it, it might not be covered. Okay. So there's just certain things that I think, depending on the carrier, right, we all have different policies. State Farm has one policy, so just be familiar with it. It's so important that you sit, sit with an insurance professional to have that conversation that you feel comfortable with the policy that you are buying. Right, and that's what I was just gonna say. So the very best bet for anybody renting, whether it's a home, an apartment, anything, is to sit down with you and have a conversation mm -hmm. about what their needs are and what the best situation would exactly. be. Exactly. Right. And you can find all of Bernice's contact information in the description below. Um, and yeah, reach out if you have questions. She would love to answer them. So thank you so much for filling Thanks us in for today. Having me.